for our sins. And I don't, I'm not up here bragging on how good of a woman she was. She was perfect in my eyes and, and in my family's eyes. She's the best momo that you could ever have. And she took such good care of us. But the thing that I rejoice in today is that we serve a Savior that saved her from her sin. And, and I know a lot of times on Mother's Day and Father's Day, we put a lot of emphasis on our mother and our father and things like that. But ultimately speaking, the reason I love my mother so much is because she taught me about Jesus. Amen. I love my daddy because he took me to church and he preached to me. And I, I love my mama because I think about the, the times in her life when she went to the house of God. And it, it, I, I told Emily on the way here, I, I guess if somebody here in this church reminds me of my mama, it would be Sister Karen because she sits on the second pew about where my mama sat and all the grandkids just love her to death. Amen. That, that's the same situation, same scenario that I had growing up. And oh, how I look back on those times this morning, and I appreciate all the good times that we had through, down through life. And I, I thank God for allowing us an opportunity to go to church with our grandparents and see them stand up and testify. And my mama, sometimes she uh, would speak up in church, she'd testify, but she really wouldn't say much at all. And she would, really wouldn't even get two or three words out every time she testifies. She might just stand up and say, Jeff, she'd say, I'm glad I'm saved. And tears would just be weep, uh, going, rolling off her cheeks. And she would just uh, be crying, rejoicing at the fact that she'd gotten saved. Uh, back in 1988, when my daddy was in high school, I guess it was, uh, he was born in 68. But by the time he was 20 years old, uh, he had been, uh, I don't know if he was preaching yet or not. He was close to preaching. Uh, but the Lord had been dealing with him about some things. And uh, Daddy speaks of when he would go home and he would study his Bible uh, there at the desk. And he would uh, uh, study his Bible around home. And he would uh, preach, uh, preach from, uh, in different, several different places. I don't know if he was preaching the, the night she got saved or not as far as in that time frame. I know that in, in 1988, in, in the month of July, there was a summer revival going on there at Alva Chapel Missionary Baptist Church in Russellville. And Brother Amos Hood was holding the revival, and he was preaching that night out of, the, out of the text in Jeremiah where it says, The summer has passed, and the harvest has ended, and ye are not saved. And my mom come to the altar that Friday night and got born again. Amen. And, and Daddy talks about how uh, that he always thought his mama was beautiful and how that uh, that night, though, when she got up out of the altar, that she had such a pretty smile on her face because she had met the Lord. Let me just go ahead and say there right here uh, that getting saved, it will make you smile. Amen. Uh, you will rejoice in, in, in having the Lord as your personal Savior. And, and, and so many times, we, uh, we want, when somebody dies, we want to put them into heaven. But ultimately speaking today, uh, somebody will only go to heaven heaven if they know Jesus as their personal Savior. And there is no other way to get to heaven. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Uh, but in, here in 2 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul, uh, he's talking to these people here at the church at Corinth, and he says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. Amen. He says, Who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. I'm glad that when we get saved, the Holy Ghost comes to live on the inside of us. Amen. And Jesus said, I go away, but he said, I will not leave you comfortless. He said, I'll send a comforter down to you. He referred to the Holy Ghost as being the comforter. And certainly that Holy Spirit that resides within today, it is very comforting to have, is it not? It's very comforting when something happens in your life that it almost seems like it's too much for you to bear. You seem overwhelmed by all the things that are going on, all the circumstance. And I guess Thursday morning and, and yesterday was two of the hardest days of my life. And, and just seeing my mama laying in a casket, knowing that all the... And everybody says, well, you ought to be glad you've got the memories with her. And I praise God for that. But I also understand that all the memory making is over down here. And I'll not make another memory with her down here. And I uh, can rejoice, though, in the memories that we have. And I can look forward to seeing her one day after a while. But if there's ever been a time in my life when I've needed comfort, it's this week. And God has been there with me. And although it feels like I'm overwhelmed, and I've, all, all I've been able to do at nighttime when I go to bed is just lay there and watch home videos uh, and, and just uh, cry myself to sleep at knowing that my mama is no longer here. I do have a rejoicing in my heart today because I know that I will see her again. It's not because she was a member at Alpha Chapel. It's not because she got baptized. They mean it's not because she was a good person, uh, but it's because she got saved uh, back in the year of 1980. 
38. Amen. And, and, and Daddy told us that yesterday, and he told the family, and I told the family, and Jacob told the family, we said, if you ever want to see Carolyn Fleming again, you better know the same God that she knew. Amen. And I praise the Lord that I know this morning that the God of all comfort, uh, he lives in my heart, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. It says, who comforteth us in all our tribulation. Not just half the tribulation that we go through, uh, but in all our tribulation, the God of all comfort. If you're saved, he's writing the church right here. He's saying, if you're saved, you have a comforter on the inside of you, and he will comfort you in all your tribulation, that we may be, uh, that we may be able also to comfort them which are in any trouble. Amen. People that are in trouble, you can comfort them if you know the Lord. You can give them comfort. And you can help them to rejoice when they're in tribulation. Every kind text, every kind word, every visit that was paid, every word that was spoken, everybody was so encouraging to us as they walked through the line and they'd hug our neck and say, she's in a better place. And, and just reminding us constantly that no matter how e evil it seems down here when somebody goes through death, and I know that it seems it's just painful to watch. But the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians, Paul, he's talking here. He says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, he says, we are of all men most miserable. Amen. I'm glad that, this, that down here is not the end. And for, for a child of God, uh, when you get to heaven, that's only the beginning. Amen. But if you're lost today, this is the best that it will ever be for your life. It's not going to get any better for you if you're lost, if you die in your current condition then you won't have any hope beyond this world. He said, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we're of all men most miserable. And death, it seems like a terrible thing. But he also says here that the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. He says, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And this is the text that my dad preached from this morning at the graveside, but I'll just use it again. Praise God, it's not going to wear out. I believe we ought to use it again if it lays on our heart. And the Lord put it here this morning in front of us, so we're going to read from it. He said, Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. But he said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. He says, For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. And then he says, So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, the strength of sin is the law. He said, But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, O death, where is thy sting? For somebody down here and for myself, it seems like that death is a, an awful sting. Some of you have been through death recently and some of you have in days gone by, but for me it was the first momo I'd ever lost. I've lost a great-grandparent before. I've lost three or four of those since I've been living, but this is the first grandparent that I've lost, and it hits home differently. And I told Mama, I said, I don't know how in the world I'll be able to go through it when you pass away. And uh, I said, I just hope the Lord comes and gets us all before that, before that day takes place. But I'm, I'm rejoicing today that we have comfort in these hard times. And I'm not trying to play on your emotion this morning. It's been an emotional week for me. And, and I know emotions are, are sometimes they overwhelm us and we can't contain ourselves. We can't hold ourselves together, it seems like. But, but when, it, when you think about somebody dying, it, it does hurt us on the inside. We know that it's the last time we'll ever see them down here. But at the same time, for a child of God, you can rejoice. You can have hope and that you will see them again if they knew the Lord. He said, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But the following verse said, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. And I know we'll talk about that in a couple of weeks when Easter rolls around. It's a popular topic. And it seems like we don't preach on the resurrection enough, but a lot of people will hit it on Easter, and you ought to. But we ought to focus on the resurrection all the time down here because it, had it not been for the resurrection, had it not been for Christ being raised from the dead, then we would only have hope in this life. But because He is risen from the dead, we are not all of all men most miserable in this world. We have hope beyond this world that the Lord will take care of us and he'll take us on home. 
The dead in Christ will rise first, and then we which are alive and remain will be called together to meet them in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. We'll forever be with the Lord when this, when this life is over with, said and done. In the brevity of life, the shortness of life, James, he talked about how he said, life is but a vapor, it appears for a little time, and then it vanisheth away. And life down here, it seems like you blink your eyes, and it, just two or three years are done past. And it seems like if you blink them again, a decade is done past. And the years down here, they say the days are long, but the years are short. And I can promise you that is true. And it seems like this life is very short. And we know that death is sure, and that's why it pays to be ready to meet God. When you close your eyes in death, you need to be prepared to meet the Lord. You must know that you're saved if you want heaven as your eternal home. We have some loved ones that have done past, and Daddy said, don't you know that old Pearl Green, my mom's mother, Lynn and Pearl was their names. That was my great-grandparents. He said, don't you know that after not seeing her mama for 33 years, that there was rejoicing in the, in the presence of God when they met each other face to face once again. I'm encouraged at that this morning. That gives me hope to press on. That gives me hope to preach on. That, that gives me a drive. That puts a drive within me and it puts some fire inside of my bones to know that there is a better land awaiting us and to know that this is not the best it's, it's going to be. Uh, it, but the song, the inspiration sing, it says the best is yet to come. Amen. Uh, we are going to a land that is fairer than day and by faith we shall see it afar. I know that we look at, uh, we look at death as being a, a harsh thing and it's hard to make it through it, I know. Uh, but really it's a stepping stone from here to eternity and the only one that can be with us during that hour and our final hour is the God of all comfort. Amen. He gives us grace to face tomorrow. He gives us grace to take us home. The song Squire Parsons used to sing, he'll give us new grace when it's my time to go. I'm glad that the Lord, he gives us grace in that hour. Amen. He gives Mama grace to leave this walks of life. He gives the family grace during that hour to make it. Amen. He gives us grace in the funeral home line. He gives us grace the days following. Amen. If you ever lost a loved one, I can promise you it's not going to be easy. But we do serve a God of all comfort who will give you grace when that time comes. Amen. We serve one that gives us grace. And I know that he gives grace to Paul. He told Paul, he says, you know, he said, well, Paul said, my grace is, or uh, Jesus told Paul, he said, my grace is sufficient for thee. Amen. He said, and I know you've got three, or you've got some thorns in your flesh, and you've asked me three times to remove that thorn out of your flesh, and I don't know if that was a literal thorn or not, or if that was somebody that was hindering Paul and the ministry. I don't know if it was something that he, uh, was just bothering him from time to time. I don't know what was going on in the life of Paul, but the Lord told Paul, he said, my grace is sufficient for thee. Amen. He said, I'll give you grace when you need it. And it may not be easy in life. You may have a hard time in your life, but God will give you grace. Amen. He'll give you grace in your trying hour. He'll give you grace in your dying hour. And the Lord, He's blessed us in so many ways. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. Comfort it means support. It means consolation. It means to strengthen the mind when depressed. And you that are saved, you can comfort those that are, that are struggling in life. I can attest that that's true. You've comforted me this week. And every phone call, as I've already mentioned, it, it comforts me. It helps me. And I know that we're to bear one another's burdens. And y'all outdid yourself as a church. I, I appreciate each, each and every one of you. But I'm glad I've got somebody to comfort me. I'm glad I can count on you to comfort me. And I hope and pray that you can count on me to comfort you when the time comes. Daddy said yesterday, he said, I'm usually on the other end. I'm the one paying the visits and, and, and carrying food and things like that when somebody passes away. And Daddy's never been through something like this in his life. I've seen my Daddy cry more this, this week than I've ever seen him in my life. And, and it breaks my heart to know that, that my Daddy, you know, he, he lost a parent. And I, I, I can't imagine those that you can, that can relate to that. Or if you've lost a loved one, we, underst we don't really understand what you've went through just necessarily. Uh, but we can sympathize with one another. Amen. Although I may not understand what you've been through, I can sympathize with you when the time comes. And I hope that you'll do the same for me as you already have. And I appreciate that. But when somebody uh, is there to comfort us, that's good for us. But it seems like when you're by yourself is when it hits you the hardest. Amen. And when you get by yourself and it hits you, who are you going to turn to? Uh, the, the only one to turn to that I can find in the scripture is the God of all comfort. Amen. That's why we have the Holy Spirit today. And that's why I can rejoice because I have comfort in my heart in the trying times. 
And if you're saved, you'll have it as well. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the comfort that He gives us that passeth all understanding. And I think about David when he wrote the 23rd Psalm. He said, Thy rod and thy staff, he said, they comfort me. You think about him in that psalm, I think he's referring to himself as a sheep. He's referring to the Lord as being his shepherd. And the shepherd's staff and rod, they comfort him. The sheep are comforted by the staff and rod of the shepherd. Amen. Anything wicked in this life, the shepherd, he drives it away from the sheep, I believe. The shepherd watches over the sheep. I'm comforted in knowing that God is watching over me and he's taking care of me. And he's driving away all the demonic forces of hell out of my life. And I, I know that we have things that can be an influence on us from time to time. And, but I, I'm glad that, that God, he drives away anything that might be a hindrance to us. I know we face temptations from time to time, but the Lord said, I'm not going to leave you with temptations without a way to escape. Amen. He said, you've not been tempted any more than I have. He said, I've been tempted just like you are, and you always have a way to escape temptation. But the Lord, he is comforting to us. In chapter 7 of 2 Corinthians, verse 13, Paul says, Therefore we were comforted in your comfort, yea, and exceedingly the more joyed we for the joy of Titus, because his spirit was refreshed by you all. I want to say this morning that you can comfort those around you. And as he says here, he says, Yea, and exceedingly the more joyed we for the joy of Titus. Let me know that joy is contagious. Amen. When somebody walks in with a smile on their face, you can pick up somebody's day in a heartbeat just by walking in and, and speaking a kind word. Just by walking around with a positive attitude, you can cause somebody else to have joy. And you'll never have true joy unless you know the Lord. But for a child of God, when we get down and out, we can rejoice that we have a hope beyond this world by the joy of others, by the Lord giving us joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. I believe that the Lord, He gives us comfort and He gives us joy. If my mama had died and lost... I couldn't have stood here today and preached to you. And I couldn't have helped in that funeral yesterday. My dad preached the sermon, but I couldn't have even helped. I, couldn't, I probably couldn't have even went to the funeral home because it would have been so tough knowing that I wouldn't see her again. But praise the Lord. When somebody's saved, not only do we have comfort, but we do have joy. We have joy that we will see them again. And it's not goodbye, it's just see you later. I was thinking this morning as they, as we, I was a pallbearer as well, we helped roll that casket up onto that vault and we had a shortage of vaults yesterday is why we had to wait till this morning to have the graveside. But we rolled that casket up on that vault and I began to think about how when somebody's buried, their head is to the west. That way when they rise up on the day of the resurrection, when the Lord calls us on home, they'll be facing the east. Amen. When the Lord splits that eastern sky, They'll, re they'll raise up in that glorified body and they'll meet him in the air. Amen? Praise God for that. But if we think about burying somebody, when you bury somebody, that means that you're not going to dig it up. But I, I like to refer to it as planting them. Amen? Because when you plant something, it will sprout. And when you plant something, it will come up. I praise the Lord today that when somebody dies, they will sprout. Amen? They're like a flower. They'll come out of that grave one day after a while. When the trump of God shall sound, the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we which are alive and remain will be called together to meet them in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. I'm looking forward to that day. I'm excited. I can have joy in that fact knowing that I will uh, see all my loved ones that have done going on before us. And I, I love the song that we sing. I firmly promise you that I'll meet you by the river. Amen. I wonder today, can you make that promise to the person sitting next to you? Can you make that promise to your spouse? Can you make that promise to your loved one, to your children today? Can you say that I firmly promise you that I will see you again one day after a while? If you can't make them that promise today, you might want to come pray. You might, if you're lost today, you might want to say, I need to be saved. I'm lost and I don't know that I'll see my parents after this life is over with. 
I better make sure I'm saved. If you don't know about your salvation, you know there's actually people that are confused and they don't know whether or not they're saved. But praise the Lord, I'm glad it's a no-so salvation. Amen. You don't have to wonder about it. You don't have to worry about it. Praise the Lord that he, he sends a comforter on the inside of us. If you don't have comfort in your life today, if you don't have that comforter residing within you, you might want to come and get saved while we, while we stand, while we come with the song. That's as far as I feel impressed to go this morning. I wonder, would you want to come pray today? Would you want to come ask the Lord into your heart? Confirm, we promise the people in this church that you will see them again when this life is over with, said, and done. Can you say, I'll meet you by the river on that bright and leasing shore? Can you say that one day after a while, I'll meet Jesus face to face, and I'll be in heaven for all eternity? I don't have to wonder if I'm going to heaven. And people say, when I get to heaven, I'm going to go golfing. I'm going to go fishing. No, that's not what I'm going to do. I'm not going to go hunting. That's my favorite hobby down here. I'm not going to go fishing. I'm not going to go watch any kind of television program. Praise the Lord. I'm going to go to the feet of Jesus and praise Him for all eternity. Because had it not been for Christ, had it not been for Calvary, and Jesus died on the cross, then we'd be miserable and we wouldn't have any hope. The Bible says if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we're of all men most miserable. But I'm glad because he paid the debt that I did that he, he did not owe, and I owed a debt I could not pay. Because he paid that debt, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Had it not been for Jesus paying that debt, we'd have no hope of eternal life. Amen. While we stand, while we sing, I wonder, would you come?